Warning! This review may contain some spoilers, so if you've never seen the movie, go watch it first. If you want to, though. A message from the freak. Hey, this is the movie Freak, a biggest fan you'll ever know. The kinds of movies I'm more into are comedies, anime flicks, and family stuff. Uh, the good kind. Thank you! But sometimes I like to watch a very weird movie. So weird, in fact, it's pretty entertaining. That movie in particular is Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloombeam. Being released in 1986, the film also marked the big screen debut of the late comedic actor Jim Varney, who before this was doing commercials for a national advertising company known as Carton and Cherry as his signature character Ernst P. Worrell, a surreal, oh, hilarious redneck man who always talked to his off-camera friend Vern while promoting a product. I've got to have my convenient coffee every morning. It's so hot and black and rich and good. If he didn't say Vern's name, though, you would think he was talking to you into buying a container of cottage cheese. That's why I'm training on Cream Weaver Highland Cottage Cheese. Ooh, that sounds good. Where can I buy it? It's got your protein, it's got your calcium, it's got your primo taste. Uh, the stuff doesn't have GMOs in it, right? Yes, sir, Vern. It won't be long before I'm a lean, mean bowling machine. Know what I mean? Are you sure it's real cottage cheese and not somebody's splooge? Oh, for God's sakes, just take my money! Whether you like Ernest or not, the commercials, and especially the character, became a massive hit. John Cherry, one of the founders of the advertising agency, decided that World deserves his own movie, which wouldn't happen until 1987, the year after Dr. Otto Riddle the Gloombeam. Seriously, when I first heard about this movie, all I see on the poster is Ernest. Even on the DVD cover I have has his face on it. These producers sure love to spread his image all over this, huh? Making you think Ernest is going to be in this movie, even as the lean character next to Dr. Otto. Take a look at this opening where the accident prone man stepping into his cheesy coffin and... What's happening? Is he growing a hand out of his head? Or is somebody trying to grope him? Oh! oh. Actually, I was right the first time around as he is transformed into is Dr. So Von My god, it's like if Pinky's last name was not... Uh, uh. Okay, let's talk about the story. Dr. Otto has a machine known as the Gloombeam, which is a technically a classic cartoon magnet to wipe out the world economy. Oh, now I know why our country's fucked up. Well, there is only one hope who could stop this weirdo, Lance Sterling, who have actually known Dr. Otto since they were children, or already became adults when they were born. Hello, mother. Hello, father. I'm so glad you're my parents. Awkward. Well, to be honest, how they first met is not very clear. I'm going to take a guess that there was supposed to be a scene where Lance and Dr. Otto first meet at a daycare center. However, the director decided to cut it out because he would think the movie would be more stranger than it already is, technically. <laughs> That's the kind of movie we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, Lance has teamed up with his assistant, Doris, and Otto, like what the government wants to do with our privacy surveillance, tracks them down everywhere they go. In their attempts to try to kill the duo, Otto, his three gals, and their pet robot put on disguises to set up traps for them, like sending up an army camp for boys, have a monster devour them, who, believe it or not, was Lance's best friend. Alex? Is that you, Alex? Rudy. Uh-huh. I have made some trashy friends before, and I dumped them. Good thing I don't speak to them anymore. In other antics, which the only thing I find more fun to watch is Jim Varney portray these different kinds of characters. My favorite has to be a recurring disguise in some of the future Ernest films, an old lady called Auntie Nelda. Well, you little darling, you're blooming. Here. I've always wanted her as my grandmother. Actually, I changed my mind. Not all the 
traps, though, made sense. For example, there's one where Dr. Otto straps one of his henchwomen, Tina, onto a door dangling from a cliff, and then moves slightly down and down, caused by Chick is eating seed off of a rope. Was Otto supposed to kill our heroes, and not one of his own? Maybe the reason is Tina has the hots for Lance. Hmm, I wonder why. He's cute. Of course, like I do. For certain men I hope to meet one day. Seriously, honey, there is more to it than that. And if you're wondering what is with the riddle of the boom beam, well, my friends, it is the most surreal written dialogue you'll ever hear that would sure make the Riddler's head spin. When the money is scrambled to the very last cent, riots and hatred soon is coming. When all the world comes. <laughs> I really love the people's reactions. They really sure don't give a crap. It is I, Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, 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 who is plague on you, this trick, ick, ick, ick. It's he who had an eye and yet couldn't see. It's he who served Boulevard when he was she. Hey, mister, why not change the channel? And oh no, he's on arcade screens too! Trick. Just exchange the ball of old Saint Nick. And if that doesn't do to save the day, put another quarter in and try another play. And thus, website Twitch was born. So as you can see, the movie as a whole is seriously wacky from the plot, the characters, and especially the acting. Look, Jim Barney is a talent and he is one of the few things about this film worth watching. The guy who played Lance Sterling can't say the same. Well, I should get to go first. She always goes first. She always gets to order first in the restaurants. She always gets the window seat on the plane. Now I want to go first. Damn it. All I wanted was a Big Mac, and what'd you give me instead? Whopper! Don't you realize those Whoppers always give me gas every five minutes? Ugh! I wanted a Big Mac! You get me a Big Mac next time and not a Whopper! You son of a bitch! So yeah, the character can be a huge snob. I honestly don't care what happens to him. All I'm waiting is for Ernst to pop up somewhere. Oh, hi! What's wrong, buddy? Trouble under the hood? Well, the only trouble we have around here is... We're out of gas. Where have you been? We ain't had any gas since the money went bad. Actually, sir, we raised our prices, so you'll go broke and we don't have to. <laughs> the number one thing I love about this silly movie is the soundtrack. As a 90s baby, I often like to enjoy some cheesy 80s music, and this film is full of it. Honestly, if Jim Barney wasn't in the Strange Fest, this would have been turned out to be a big pile of dog shit. The director would later get better with the Ernest series the following year by dropping the over-the-top weirdness. Well, sometimes. I enjoy all of the Ernest stuff, especially this guilty pleasure. It has major problems, but it has enough worthy entertainment for my taste. If that kind of stuff is your thing, check this movie out and see it with your very own eyes. This is the movie for you.